The Health Minister Andy Kerr was in Aberdeen today to meet managers and he's asked them to explain how they've used so-called hidden waiting lists. And that's all from us for now. The next bulletin will be at 10.25. I'm back for that. But now we can hand you to the Sports Scene studio. Let's go to Dougie Donnelly. Nice, Jackie. Welcome. The new season begins right here on Sports Scene. This is where the talking stops and the serious business begins. Especially for Gordon Strachan, who tonight makes his competitive debut as Celtic manager. He arrived in the stadium earlier today with a rather worried look in his face. No question of the wee man easing himself in gently. This is a match of huge significance in both a football and a financial sense. Celtic tonight are in Slovakia for the second qualifying round of the Champions League, Europe's premier club competition. It's Art Media Bratislava against Celtic. Good to have you with us for the, tonight's live coverage. Kick off just a few minutes away, so let's hear immediately from my two guests tonight, Gordon Smith and Derek White. You feel a little bit for Gordon and for Celtic uh, because they haven't even played a domestic match yet, Gordon, and they're straight into this match of huge significance. Yeah, it's very difficult to judge how you're going to play when you're only regarding how you've been doing in friendlies, and all of a sudden you're right in at the top level. And it just depends on the level of the opposition. I mean, we know that there'll be a decent side but we just don't know how good they are and uh, they have had more games, obviously they've had two competitive league games but they also only had a month off uh, from the end of their season uh, finishing and the start of the season so they'll, they'll, they'll be fitter and sharper than Celtic no doubt. Yeah, so they're a bit of an unknown quantity Derek but at the same time Celtic relying heavily on the tried and trusted lads who have done the business over the last few years. Of course yeah and I think Gordon will have his uh, information on him of a certain amount of tapes, they're not household names these players are playing against and I think by the formation that we think they're going to play tonight, they play a 4-5-1 we feel it shows they do have a, a great respect for Celtic and a fear for them. But it'll be a difficult match and it's a hot climate as well. But it's, I think you know they only have 4,000, I think, as at home in their normal game. I know it's at the National Stadium tonight, which holds 30. But they get through tonight and then they're getting back to Celtic Park with a different case from obviously with 60,000 odd fans there. Right. And a word from both of you, would you take a draw? Very much, a clean sheet. I think Celtic can draw a bit worse, but I think they can maybe even win the game. Right, well, let's think positively then. Let's get us out to what I hear is a very warm evening in Bratislava. The teams are out on the pitch, so let's enjoy it. Up media against Celtic. Our commentary team, Ian McCall, and firstly, good evening to Paul Mitchell. Good evening, Diggy. Welcome, everybody, to the Slovan Bratislava Stadium, the national stadium of Slovakia, where a new chapter in the Celtic story begins tonight. Gordon Strachan returning to football after just over a year away from management to lead Celtic into this European competition. As you say, the aim is simple, to get a step closer to the Champions League group stages. Three players signed by Gordon Strachan start tonight for Celtic, Paul Telfer and Mo Kamara, and up front will be Magic Turavski. Yeah, it's a real attacking lineup, Paul. I think the, the fullbacks have both converted wide players. I don't think they'll come up the park as much as they, used to, as they usually do, and they'll be left to Sutton and Petrov and Thompson to support the, the, front, the front player. Art Media play tonight with 10 of the 11 that started the second leg last week. Juraj Helnar comes in, Alex Hillebrand, the man who drops onto the bench. Yeah, we've not seen much. What we've seen in a little bit of tape is uh, Balaz Borbelli. All the play comes through there. He's a, he's a playmaker and he also shoots from distance. So that's maybe something Celtic need to look out for. Well, Art Media's coach Vladimir Weiss says that he's just happy to have reached this stage, but forget such pre-match bluster. He's planning Celtic's downfall with a team that lost only four league matches out of 36 last term on the way to the title, the first in 107 years. Celtic have played more European football at the home of Slovan Bratislava than Art Media. Celtic having visited here in the 60s, Art Media's ground is not fit for Champions League purpose, hence the switch to the stadium tonight. Unfamiliar surroundings for Art Media in European terms because they played at the Senec Stadium last week, much smaller, but it wasn't deemed suitable for the match this evening. They were expecting a decent crowd. That's what they've got inside this stadium. And we're looking forward to the match getting underway, the first there for Gordon Strack. And he said yesterday he felt it was now all real in charge of Celtic. So our referee this evening is Selak Derlai from Turkey. And you see the Vladimir Pais, former Czech internationalist and former Slovak internationalist too, getting ready to plot the downfall of Celtic. So Art Media Bratislava forming on as Art Media Pestranka from the Pestranka district in the traditional black and white Celtic. And the change kit for this season, the all green. So John Hartson gets the first touch for Celtic competitively this season. And forget the pre-season friendlies, 
it meant nothing in terms of results. What matters now is what happens here. Early touch for number 25, Kozak. And the long ball played away by Kutula. Stan Varga involved in the action. Tumbling down there went Branislav Obzera. Thompson tried to play inside, lost out to opposite number, and that's Blazes Vaska. But there's Zuravsky. She's the ball up to Sutton. I think you can tell already, Paul, the pitch is a little bit sticky. There's not been enough water on it, the passes aren't going you know, quite quickly enough. There's a couple of sprinklers right in the middle of the field, which we missed by, I think, 60 seconds or so, cleaving the pitch earlier. But Celtic, well, the surface isn't the best. As the ball comes forward, Sutton moving up. Ball nodded away. Again, played out wide. Vasha. Battling there, pulling the ball on to Kozak. Thompson going in. Good from a Celtic point of view that Alan Thompson made it. I mean, there was concerns with his fitness and Gordon Strachan saying yesterday he's a little bit behind it in footballing terms. Well certainly even for his delivery from set plays they've got you know they've got a hell of a threat Celtic, Harps and Sutton, the two centre backs and his delivery is, is, is top is top class. That's Jack again knocks the ball forward. Neatly held in there by Zera and played on again. He's come out of getting involved and knocks it away. Tidy defending. And it's not often you see a free transfer from Burnley playing for Celtic. And Kamara bundling in there, but he'll get the benefit of the decision. I have felt it a wee bit fortunate there. I thought that perhaps that was a free kick the other way, but uh, it's very early in the game. Looking lively already, Branislav Observer. Yeah, I think he's felt a wee bit fortunate there. I think that was the, the, the Artemidia's free kick. The referee's name is Seluk Derline, not Celtic Derline, so we won't expect too many decisions. Marshall plays it forward, Hartson looking for it, Zunarski. Interesting to see how he plays. It's John Hartson. This evening looking to add these five European goals for Celtic. Ball gets played out, there's an injury, so Celtic this evening. Three signings made by Gordon Strachan that start, Telfer, Kumara, Zunarski. And they look like Marshall. Telfer, Baldi, Varga, Kamara, Petrov, Lennon, Sutton and Thompson, Zuravsky and Hartson and Gordon Strachan. I mean, it's a good lineup to put out. Yeah, definitely. I think already early on, as you would expect, I think Thompson and Petrov play in the park a little bit to allow uh, Kamara and uh, Telfer to get out up the outside to give them width. And uh, Lennon just sits in front of the back four. This is bad news for Armenio Bratislava. He's got a fairly thin squad as it is, and as well as Asper Belli, picked out by him at the start of the match who's going to have to hobble off. He's got a couple of goals in Europe this term. And the Celtic fans who joined us in Bratislava, certainly had a good night last night. And about a 1,000 perhaps here in Bratislava. We'll just have to try and run that one off. I don't know what he's feeling like at the moment, Ian Gordon Stratton. Well, I know he's been in the game for so long, but I'm sure he's nervous. His first game in terms of a real, real really big club and you know, the financial reality of it. They've really got to go through these ties. Little push there. First something involved in the action. Come on, on he's Celtic competitive debut, plays the ball forward. Sutton, but it breaks out wide, Sutton again, sits, waits for the ball. Podrick goes across. Zanaski drops. It was almost neatly done by Celtic. But partnerships take time to, to come together. Oh, definitely. Yeah, Zanaski showed a really good touch there, nice movement, but didn't quite get, get the return pass. Chummy with a long ball forward. Alanar couldn't control. Hartson offered himself short, but Hansen came in. One thing you notice, there's not a lot of atmosphere, which is strange for, a, for, a, for quite a big game like this with so much at stake. That might be suits, Celtic. Art Media do have cheerleaders. 
Yes, mm -hmm. not, not many of them. I didn't notice them though. That's observation. <laughs> Up to number eight to line, Alan Thompson loses out. And Shirt comes forward. I suppose the, the bright thing in the opening of five and a half minutes is David Marshall's yet to really be bothered. The defence really haven't been too troubled then. No, I don't think he's actually touched the ball yet, so uh, hopefully that'll continue. Karaski goes in, but can't get away from Katula. Hopefully forward by Hewitt, the Czech public player. On the far side, Bronislav Fordrick. From a Slovan Bratislava player, he'll be well at home in these surroundings. It's a throw. Celtic's new captain, Neil Lennon, decides to bring his goalkeeper into the action. Over the angle, ball Hartson. Kamara streaming for the ball. Stan Varga, who was met by hordes of journalists and camera crews at the airport yesterday, puts the ball across. Stepping forward, didn't get. Start from Celtic so far, They're trying to apply some pressure. So that's going to get the ball away. And the referee's going to give the free kick. Although Kamara did look like he was going to get into a promising position here. Yeah, but it's still, I think it's still a promising position, Paul, because uh, obviously with Thompson's delivery and the, the big lads going up, it's a, it's a chance. So John Hartson scored in the Champions League group stages last turn. He's done Alan Thompson. Just behind the goal. Thompson delivers. This is a danger from John Hartson. Well, the offside flag had gone up against John Hartson, but that's just when we see it in Scotland so often, that's what he does. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a good chance, obviously, it was all saved. It was interesting that Baldy was used as a decoy there. I haven't seen that before. Usually he's right on the top of the ball, but he's come right out of the play and as a decoy to try and pull one of their uh, bigger markers. I think there'd be concern from our media's point of view that John Hartson got three got three goals saved. Yeah, if it wasn't offside, he would be disappointed he didn't hit the target pole. The Rangers, Celtic and Dunfermline have all played in Bratislava before, all against Slovan Bratislava, and Dunfermline were the only team to lose the side that went on to win the Cup Winners' Cup in season 68-69. Media are playing very deep, Paul. Very deep. Trying to hit the counter attack. It's interesting, a, a normal 4 4 2 system, but with a 4 5 1, especially at home, is a surprise. Yeah, it is. It is. Here comes Sutton for Celtic. It was nudged a little, but play on, says the referee. And you think it comes away with the ball. And the home crowd start to applaud as Katula comes forward. And can play from Howard up involved again, especially playing the lone striker role, but he's drifting back and allowing Zena to play up front at the moment. Good solid defending for Paul Telfer. So I think showing some power to come through, that was a good tackle though. Too influential thus far. And loses out again to Sutton. One ball forward. Here's a danger man, Kozak. The 
defending from Bobo Baldi. Just a little harder touch, just a nice touch away. Good excellent, defending. Excellent play, yeah. Thompson. Zuranski. Terrific goal scoring record in Europe. He's looking to set up now. Plays it across the header, had to come in. Definitely a better cross there. John Harsley peeled off his man at the back post and was right in with a free header. A, a better cross, it was a, a real goal scoring opportunity. I'm sure it was the third player to play at left back this season for our media. Ball comes forward, Sutton trying to win it. So I think the coach is a little uncertain. There's been uncertain times for our media Bratislava. They've, they did win the Super Cup, to be fair, but they've lost their opening two league matches. They've not scored, and the coach was a, a touch tetchy about it yesterday at the press conference. Well, it certainly looks that, that, like that even this early stage they lack a little bit of confidence. Certainly, maybe the coach with the formation has certainly lacked a little bit of confidence because they're, they're playing a touch negative just now. Particularly for the home team. Celtic will be relatively unconcerned so far. It's a ball out of play. Stan Barger too very entertaining at the press conference yesterday just suggesting that pre-season is pre-season for everybody in terms of tackling and work rate apart from Bobo Baldi. He's yeah. never seen a tackle he didn't like. Yeah, that, talk, that tackle was a wee bit more difficult to say. Well, they go against Celtic. Paul Telfer. Good under Gordon Strachan. Gordon Train Southampton's the long angle ball comes out. The last chat played it in. Kamara defended. He was going for the spectacular. Ooh, the perfect angle of that. And not a noted goal scorer, bless it. No, it was a poor bit of the ball, but I have noticed last chat hugs this touchline and gives him great win. Hopefully his delivery will remain as poor as that, but uh, you know he had a lot of room there. Jan Kozak. Petula. No particular hurry, and you see that Hallenar spins the ball out wide. Sure comes forward, that's better play. He has to play it full back, but he can play in the left midfield role too. Petula again, flip forward. Stan Varga there, a reassuring presence for the back for Celtic. Nice shot. There's only two in the box for him. For Belly takes the touch. He scored twice in Europe, Malazan for Belly. He scored last season against the Napier of Ukraine and scored against Kara Almaty. And he showed good touch. Yeah, it was a nice touch, nice turn, and uh, a decent effort. It was never, never going to trouble the goalie, but it was half a chance. I think Sutton's down. Well, that's a concern immediately for Celtic. It's not, often, versatile. not often Sutton lies like that unless there's something really wrong with him. Well, the season is 13 and a half minutes old, and Gordon Strachan will just be hoping that his number nine will pick himself back up, but it doesn't look great at the moment. And the attention coming in. Looks like his shoulder, is it his shoulder maybe? Well, he certainly tried to get round on his ass for belly and try to close him down, but he's done for the night. Chris Sutton is done. His 44th European appearance will end, and this is the reason why. Chris Sutton going to ground, and that's such a disappointment, not only for this time, but it's the immediate worry, the start of the season. It's a huge blow for Celtic. I mean, to my... In my opinion, he's been the most influential player in Scotland the last four or five seasons. He's, he's an outstanding player. Um, I don't quite know what happened there. It looked quite innocuous. It may well be the way that Chris Sutton has fallen. Neil Lennon was in and around there too. But the man who was Martin O'Neill's first signing he will leave the field of play. And also the fact that they're taking their time with him, they're not rushing him, they're not moving him. But that suggests it's serious. It definitely does. I think what they will do is probably Aidan McGeady will play wide right, more on the right, and Petrov will come in a little top. Well, we've got Keradine at uh, trackside, Keradine will find out exactly what's happening in the medical update on Chris Sutton, and he'll be the first to know. It does, it looks like his arm, I think, the arm or his shoulder. 
The other thing at this stage, I mean, the substitutes really haven't been warming up, so you've got to get somebody warmed up quite quickly and get them on and get them into the, the pace of the game. Yeah, look, on a night like this, not such a big problem. A cold December night at Tynecastle, maybe, but not so much here. It's very, very warm in Bratislava. And Celtic just taking their time. And the home fans don't like it, but there's Ida McGeary. And McGeary will be prepared to come on. And given a key role in this Champions League. Second round qualifier, first leg. He'll need his jersey. If Sutton leaves the field of play, we wish him well. It looks like Sutton, Chris Sutton might have to go straight to hospital. It looks a real, real bad injury. Well, we obviously don't want to alarm the family and friends of Chris Sutton. You can see for yourself that he's been taken off. There are, of course, ambulances here. The Celtic medical team will quickly assess what's needed. Ready. And there was scale there for Celtic. The ball was played back, and Marshall certainly didn't appreciate it. But the flag is up to make the change. And on comes number 46. Celtic back to 11. Thompson. Nice chat. Goes in with a tackle. He's certainly caught the eye so far, the former East Strengthen player. He's 21 years old, the number eight was his last chat. Once again, plays the ball to Pintula. Pintula again tries to play the cross. Ball forward. Not a great deal of football being played as such here. I mean, from Art Media, Celtic trying to get the ball down, ping it wide, bring in Zivavsky, but Art Media yeah. still not really doing no, too much. There were a couple of passes, a decent play, but without ever penetrating or hurting, or hurting Celtic, and that'll probably suit Celtic just now. But the blow of losing uh, Big Sutton is, is still on him just now. Well, the goalkeeper didn't cover himself in glory there. Alan Thompson forward. That was a nice touch. Here comes Hartson. Petrov really getting in the game for the first time. Telfer. Celtic trying to build. Paul Telfer. Again, you can see it quickly, Art Media. Vratislava getting men right behind the ball. Mara forward, Hartson. Well, they were claiming for offside, but then Mara did his job and got the clearance away. Nice chat. That's a neat interchange. What pace does Observa have? Observa taking on Kamara. That looked like a free kick. Well, they might have got away with the last one here. He wasn't getting away with that one. I actually, I've got to say, Paul, the first look, I don't think it looked a free kick. I don't think it did anything. I don't think that was a free kick. Yeah, I don't know. It was no, the the right. flag was right up, but it certainly didn't look like a free kick to me. It was the right arm of Kamara. I think that persuaded him in the end. Well, some go for you, some go against you. And Jan Kozak stands over the ball. Sure, waiting to deliver. Kozak plays it out. It's a preset move. It was a nice effort to neatly work. That was very clever indeed. Fordrick came up and put the shot in. Ball played in, knocks away. First quarter of the match comes after 90 minutes. It comes for the home side. The first period, a little bit of pressure they've had. Uh, it was a really nice little free kick. And it's certainly the shot, I think, was going on target for if Celtic hadn't got the block. For two laps. That's it. Corner taker and set piece taker. Knocks the ball back. He's there again. Right foot cross popped by Neil Lennon. He's listed at six foot three. Kozak, he just looks so much taller. 
Paul Flickton badly defended. Flicked across. Marshall was allowed. And David Marshall really gets involved for the first time this season. And he was, well, you shouldn't be beaten from there anyway, but he was there to just pan the ball away. Yeah, I think the, the mistake lay with Kamara. I think Kamara's just got to head out for a corner and defend from there. Comes left for Breck again. Played it out wide. Better spell from the home side. Baldi comes across. Ball first, player second. That's the bubble Baldi. Just going in, making players know that he's around. Home side. Trying to capitalise on their pressure. Strange decision to play the ball back. Kind of took the sting out themselves then. Yeah, I mean technically they're very, you know, they are, they, they are decent. They keep the ball in the deck, but uh, apart from that one minute spell, they haven't looked as if they're going to penetrate Celtic at all. I do think the full, particularly the our, our left foot Celtics uh, left back Kamara is maybe over covering a little bit and allowing. Uh, Fast chat about maybe too much room. Stan Varga made the point that you know the whole the back four speak English, they all communicate well with each other, but it will take a little bit of time just to gel and you know know how certain players like to play in certain situations. Totally, I mean it takes a while for a back four to, to really get to know each other. So our media Bratislava nil, Celtic nil. Champions League qualifier. Ball played out. Here's Raschak again. Stepping inside this time. That was a decent ball too. Obzera gets a low ball across. And the whole fans starting to react to what they see. And it's just slightly loose there from Alan Thompson. Goes out. The ball in. Belly. That's the ball away. That's an interesting ball over. Marshall came, he went back! And he was almost punished too. Looked like Juraj Halna came through. It was a nice pass inside the fullback. And Celtic almost paid the penalty. I, I thought Baldy did really well not to bring him down and get himself sent off. You know, and make the striker finish it because it wasn't it wasn't an easy chance, albeit it was a good chance. Seemed to come up a little bit on the leg, almost the shin, I think. Yeah, to, he just to came off. Uh, away. It's called a shank in football, I think. <laughs> sure goes across. McGiddy goes in. He's got the better of the check. Played it across. And the ball comes across. Maybe if McGeady had been on a wee while longer, he'd have taken that ball in a little bit before crossing it so early. So Chris Sutton obviously had to go off. I mean, they have reshuffled, as you call it. Yeah, uh, McGeady's a fine young player, uh, uh, but you know, undoubtedly Celtic will miss Chris Sutton's presence. Particularly in terms of nicking an away goal, which is, is crucial. Petrov just tucking in now, over in the middle. And still in Petrov, the ball gets played away. Fights for it, and that's a free kick. So, this is obviously the first leg. You can see the second leg of this match between Celtic and Art Media Bratislava next Tuesday night on the BBC. Looking forward to you joining us for that. And well, at the moment, it's very much alive here, nil nil on the first leg. Off. Touch the ball through, played back by Morbelli. Vargas steps up. Marks 
Dixon. Can't get it there. Alma with a lovely pass through. Again, they might go from distance. Largest West Jack. Certainly went for it, but Bobo Baldy was across. Good play. Baldy started the game very well. I mean, it's a lovely run with West Jack, but Baldy again it makes a, an interception. He's coming for a bit of stick lately, Baldy, but he's, he's certainly playing very well tonight. Really is certainly having a few long range efforts yet to trouble David Marshall in goal. Oh, oh. Beautifully done by Alan Thompson. Well, there's the good and the bad together. It's so unlike him as well, that's usually his forte, isn't it? They cross the, the final ball. Alna plays the ball across, trying to bring in Fordrick. What at this stage, I'd, I'd like to see Zarafsky playing a lot closer to John Hartson. He's miles, he's far too far away from him just now. Seems to be drifting very much down the right hand side. Yeah, and maybe he needs to up his work rate just a touch as well. Oh, Zanowski, 23 European goals and 39 European ties. Scored on his European debut. His first Polish club. And then rattled the goals in. Again, Kamala seemed to be very far up. That allowed Hanna to drop off, bring the ball. Kozak. That's a poor ball, Jack Kozak. Internationalist. I don't really think it's a night when the Celtic fullbacks need to really push on quite high up the pitch. It's McGiddy. He's just joining us. He was on after 60 minutes as a substitute for Chris Sutton, who fell very awkwardly indeed. And left the field on a stretcher. Hartson. Miss Thompson will get you news about Chris Sutton as soon as we can. He's been taken down into the levels of the stadium on the far side where the dressing rooms are located. John Hartson goes forward. There's a tug there. Andre Debnar. In his second spell at Art Media. He's certainly going across. That's a definite fellow. I've watched Debnar. He's a real he's not a tall guy, he's a real competitor. Uh, and they're having a real battle, him and John Hartson, but that was definitely a foul. Well, it was ten years that Armenia then left about three years ago, played in Turkey, then went to play in Iran, and then decided to come home. Strange combination. Certainly is. Yes. Could Varga be used here, maybe? Stan Varga, just standing beside Ovo Maldi. Magedi, maybe. Magedi, Petrov. Stylian Petrov on his 50th European appearance. Which is Magedi. And Magedi as he prefers to be called. And are disappointing and very team. Yeah, I think it might be better to move the ball and, and have a strike of it with power. But uh, I mean, he's got it on target and it made the goalie work, but uh, he didn't have to work too hard to put in. Here comes Vashak again. Goes back outside him. Short, but Bromelli was there. Either way, Petrov. Nice head up. Zurafsky, let's see what pace he has. Keeping the ball very much on the right foot. It's a good pass to McGiddy. Telf Telfer's Telf there. Comes running up. Good effort. Good save from the goalkeeper, too. Nice play by Celtic after 29 minutes. Super play, and uh, you know, Gordon Strack has been telling us how fit uh, Telford is, and he certainly looked at there. He made a 50 yard run to get on support. And it was a good strike on target, maybe a nice height for the goalie, but uh, not a good save, I suppose. Just a slight deflection. A little nick there. Yeah. Doesn't score very often, I think, just over 20 goals in his 530 odd games down south. And then his Celtic debut, he came close to opening the scoring. Centre back who's scored twice in European competition for Art Media, both against the F91 of Luxembourg. And Art Media's first ever European tie. It's a very warm night 
in Bratislava and certainly the players we trained last night. The conditions certainly much warmer than it was at this time last night. Podrek misses out to Nagini. Thompson is getting absolutely no room down that left hand side near that one sublime piece of skill, but it's really not getting any space. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're pushing up quite tight on them. They're pushing on top of Celtic when Celtic come into uh, their half. Uh, other than that, they're simply deep. Is that the basic problem when it's sort of four in the midfield against five? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, at, at times Celtic are playing, you know, Lennon's sitting quite deep and it's really a three in there. Um, which gives them a lack of width and lets the full backs go five forward. But, you know, even at this stage, Paul, you, you know, these are a decent side, but uh, you wouldn't be that worried about them, I don't think, over two legs. Famous last words, of course. Just for Mr. I was thinking the same as the ball was angled in. Catch off. Thompson he tripped over his own feet there. I thought it was a foul. We disagree. <laughs> I thought it was a foul. Kozak comes forward. Last check again. Zeta's in the middle of Katula. And Kozak can get the ball across. It's Kozak who comes across. The ball comes in. Marshall comes. And Marshall's handling. But I don't think he's terribly pleased with the fact that the delivery is coming in. Well, they seem to be getting down this flank. Uh, Celtic's left uh, flank quite easily. There's Derricky coming forward. A bit of position as McGiddy. He's the recipient of the pass. It's Bobo Baldi. My eyes were not deceiving me. Celtic's new centre forward, Bobo Baldi. Dashing forward at pace. Terrific play, I mean. He looks as if he's been stung by all this criticism because he's having a stormer tonight. He's done really well. He was like a winger there. I mean, his last touch was a little bit heavy, but he'd, he'd got a bleeding nose. He'd got that far up the park, I think. So you what, he did well. And he's won his side of corner. Always looks in good shape too. He does, but he's, he hasn't stayed up for the corner because you can see him in the centre circle, he's knackered. He looks in good shape, but he's tired. <laughs> so Stan Varga, the main threat. Varga scored against AC Milan last term for his only European goal. Waits on the delivery. Nobody at the back for Celtic. That was out. A little bit of inexperience there, I think, you just let the ball go and take a throw in and get set up again. Especially when we've mentioned the heat, it might not look too warm, but we mentioned it. You know, no, there's no rush. No, no. So we've got to that. Played in Germany in Division 3, the amateurs, for Sagan, won the championship there. Fordrick didn't quite appreciate that she would have come so far past them. Look at Vastjak, look how wide he is still. Ball comes in, Stan Varga. Well, not intentional from Varga, the third corner for Art Media Bratislava. Not an easy one to defend there though, I mean I think he's still got to do better, but not an easy one to defend, a decent whip ball into the box. Vladimir Rich just wiping himself down, I thought he'd nicked your towel there Ian. <laughs> Five inside the box for Art Media. Neil Lennon who clears. It's interesting the tallest player in the field takes all their set plays it, for some reason. It is amazing, the tallest outfield player. Stan Varga. He was going to concede the free kick there, but the referee rightly allowed play to continue. I think Gordon Strachan saying he's a Ravski, when the ball's on this side, he has to get across when John Hartson's deep. I don't think he's doing enough of that, he's not giving Celtic an out, and that's just purely doing the work. Nick 
The lead off by it. Oh, not again. Long angle ball. That's Jack goes after it. And again, you pointed it out, he's staying very, very much on this right hand touch line. Yeah, and I think because Lennon does so well sitting in front, I think Kamara is over covering the centre back and can maybe come out a little, even though over two or three yards more, so he's not less distance to cover to get there. Watching on the Celtic fans, knowing that they have to win this tie. The two legs is guaranteed some form of continuation of European football. There's no safety net at this stage of a place in the UEFA Cup. And Vera comes away. Varga comes across, times the tackle. And it's a throw into the home side, but he read it all the way to Stan Varga. Good cover. But there's definitely a problem down this side of Paul. They seem to be getting in down the side all the time. To play it in. Celtic have to play it. That was short. A little ring rusty, perhaps, Celtic in their first competitive match. I think maybe Alan Thompson as well has to sit behind the ball a little bit more. I mean, he's, he's doing an awful lot of work in this heat. Maybe sit behind the ball and just get a hold of it. Because I can again, again, they go for the ball way outside the box. And again, the shot comes in at Varga that time. Very ambitious. It's 30 yards plus. It was. It was a, that was a strange. The first one was a good corner. That was a strange corner. Angle ball again. He pulled it down well. Is that? just holding on to the ball. Supplies. Only two in the box. Bratislava. And Baldi throws it away. Sure. In the Czech Republic, one of the championship there, tries the angle shot. David Marshall goes down to say, well, he scored ag against Pena Omati in the last round. He was on target there. Good play, and you know, I think it probably was hitting the post, but uh, David Marshall wasn't an O-Ran, a good stop, and saved the corner as well, which is important. But as much as we say, you know, not being overly concerned that, you know, Armino Bratislava, they've had the best chances in the match. Well, they've had one or two from, from long range, certainly. I thought uh, Telford had a good chance for Celtic, but yeah, I mean, they are getting down the flanks, particularly this near side flank, a, a little bit too easy. Goalkeeper's coming, looking for it. He's six feet six. Penalty box belongs to him. Yeah, in there too long. Though. If I go that, that, that size, you've got to really put a bit of pace in the ball. Well, onside, since the ball goes all the way through to Marshall, who judged it perfectly for the pace of Juraj Halanar again, causing Celtic problems. And Joe Wright, well, it was a towering kick forward. It's <laughs> one old Wimbledon way, but uh, Marshall dealt with it quite comfortable, I think. Yeah. Six minutes to half time, there will be some stoppage time. And Celtic lost Chris Sutton to injury. That's a bad run. Not too bad a ball inside either, nobody picked it up. It's no trying to play keep up, he can go past people. Uh, somebody told them this is not pre season. I know, I, I think it's when he said that magnificent run he had down the wing there. That wasn't quite as good. Drifting away. I was hoping Bobby was playing midfield like Chris Sutton. So well, you never know because Chris can play the back. Yeah. So. Inside speed and track side for us. He's been chatting to the Celtic medical staff, but they wanted to break the news to Gordon Strachan first about the condition of Chris Sutton. 
So they did so, but we'll get an update for you as soon as we can. I'm striking and keen to know what's happened to his number nine. I'll bring you the details as soon as we have them from pitch side. This room's not very well located to try and get information from the body peak in the stand on the far side. I'll tell you what, the two centre backs are fairly competing with John Haas. They really are. They're giving them a hard, hard time. They're, they're a good blend. You've got Deadman who's 32, Derek who's 23. Yeah, Derek looks a good physical for a So I think battling for the ball on the deck is Daniel Oakshire. He gets the decision on the free kicks taken quickly. And Petrov came back, made the initial stop. And the ball was kept in. Tries to link up, could always play through. That was rather selfish, I thought, because I thought Katula made a terrific run. Yeah, a little pass inside might have, might have got him in and go. Well, Greg just uh, being a little bit greedy there. He played alongside Stan Varga, or played at the same club as Stan Vargas, Slovan Bratislava, for just a little while. And Stan Varga, we chatted to him yesterday. Only one of the our media players that Stan Varga is familiar with from his time in. Slovakian football. Martin well defended again. And we did it get. There's a ball across. Goes out. Angle ball is beautiful. Here's a real chance for Armenia. The ball squared across. Well worked goal, it's a super goal. We've been saying it all night about Vaschak. He's caused problems all night out in this touchline. Super pass through and really unselfish there, laying it there. And an easy finish. Oh, Hanna was brought to solve the goal scoring problem that Vice had had with his team in the early part of the season. And they don't come much sweeter than that. The score against the former European champions. That's a, that's a hammer goal for Celtic, only like 43 minutes gone just before half time. Well, Celtic just have to take it in their stride, two minutes to half time. And the first goal that Gordon Strachan sees in his Celtic managerial career goes against his side. They certainly need to be a, a little more defensive minded on this side of the field. Whether Thompson sits in a little bit or, or Kamara sits back a little bit, but uh, they're getting caught open there time and time again. It's three or four times now, Paul. So Celtic in their last four qualifying matches for the Champions League didn't concede a goal. They've conceded now. And they trail by 1-0. Is it a goal you think our media deserve on balance, or it's a little bit hard on Celtic? It's a little bit hard on Celtic, but it's certainly they've upped the tempo in the last 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and they've had more of the ball, but I got the feeling they weren't really threatening. But, you know, the two or three times down, down uh, Celtic's left back area, you know, they've got in behind Celtic with better delivery, they could have had a chance to go. And that time it was good delivery, and the boy put it in an empty net. Applaud their team and make their feelings clear. 30 seconds of normal time to go. And the ball again breaks and Kamara has to go after it. Fourth official will tell us that there's three additional minutes. To Stan Varga. Peter McGiddy. Paul Telfer. And 
Thompson. So I think looking to carve out a chance before half time. They just played through. Kiddy again, but lots of black and white jerseys round. And there's no doubt that Armida Bratislava has taken a boost from the goal, as you would expect. On this play. Karaski plays it wide, McGiddy. So it goes across to him. Takes him on well. Could be an opportunity for Alan Thompson. Defended well, though. Great play by McGarry, but not the delivery wasn't quite right. But super play, great skill. Kamara sends it across. Hartson was up there. And the free kick will be given against the Welshman and the goalkeeper. Oh, the goalkeeper's six foot six. He's got to be able to look after himself. Gordon will tell you in the studio these days you only have to jump with a goalie and they get a foul against him. So uh, I don't know if it was a foul, probably was, but there wasn't much in it. Oh, know. he touched his shoulder. I know. He touched <laughs> his, shoulder. his shoulder. That can't be allowed. I'll tell you what, the next time they go for a ball, John Hartson beat. Well, uh, I think we need a little bit more movement up top from Celtic. You know, it's, a, it's just a little bit static. Flick on there by the goal scorer. There's Hallen Hart. Right, so they'll just be quite happy for half time to come. And the word from Gordon Strachan. Awarded. And Lynn Skill, he's probably been the pick of the players by his first year. Well, Thompson coming in on the wrong side, you know, maybe his stamp position's too far up the pitch. Goes that plays the ball in the header, comes in, lots of spill with it. The safe hands of David Marshall almost let him down right on the half time whistle. Well, it's bad for Celtic at a half time. It simply could have been worse. Little header in, was close in. Super safe ball. Great save. Well, Great delivery into the box and a good save. Yeah, maybe, it, maybe should have held it, I but think at least he got away from the goal. Yeah, I think it's the holding it. Well, Gordon Strachan. Uh, some thoughts and wants to do at half time. He's taken trail by one goal to nil. Charge Alan Hart, the Slovakian under 21 international. And this is how the goal came about. Lovely pass by Jack Kozak. Running through with Spanchez Vasquez. Marshall came out, tried to meet him. Charge Alan Hart became the seventh player to score for Art Media Bratislava in European competition. And the half time scoreline at the Telem Pole Stadium is Art Media Bratislava 1, Celtic 0. Well, the first 45 minutes of the season in a competitive sense for Celtic, not one they'll look back on with any great affection, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, they looked a uh, rather disjointed side, Gordon, and you'd be concerned about the second half now. Well, it did look disjointed in different departments as well. That The back didn't look uh, all that secure at times. I mean, it's a new back four to consider. There's only Baldi and Varga played together. The two new full-backs come in, tail for seven, his first game there. And, uh, you know, they didn't seem to get a lot of cover from the midfield because they seem to be finding a lot of space between the midfield and the defence. And they've always got an outlet on the right-hand side. Every cross-field ball seems to be picking out number eight. And I just felt that Celtic seemed to be going through it, the motions as if as a friendly. They don't, they don't seem as if they're putting a lot of energy in. Only Bobo Baldi at times was showing mm. tremendous energy as he was running forward to, to join in with things. But I just felt that, that Celtic never really played well in that first half. No, you, you made the point early on, Derek, that the atmosphere doesn't help. It, it's almost like a, a summer tour match. There's no atmosphere about it yeah, for such like, an important game. Yeah, it's like a friendly. I mean, the mm. financial implications, everybody knows how much money this means to Celtic. One, they have to get through. And they're very fortunate, do you, mm. to not be two down just at half time there, uh, Jurica? Because mm. they scored that made it 2-0. Mm. Uh, uh, David Marshall wasn't so alert, which he has been all game, to be honest. 
Um, they're having a few problems, I think, in terms of the, the way they're playing at the moment. Chris Sutton's injuries obviously upset the rhythm of the things. Sure. Um, I think Kamara's getting advanced too much in the game, and he's getting caught out. That's their out ball all night, out mm. to uh, Vazchak in the right-hand side, and they got the goal from it. Yeah, it's been, been a poor game, actually, God. Not that we're con but they're concerned about the quality of the game, but it's not been good enough to be called scrappy. It's, it's been a real struggle, hasn't it? I, I think they looked really as if they were giving Celtic an awful lot of respect early on, mm. and mm. then felt... I, I'm sure they got a lot of confidence from that. They felt they gave Celtic too much respect and started to come more and more into the game. They started to push their game further forward. At first, as the guys were talking about in commentary, they were sitting in awful deep and allowing Celtic to have a lot of the ball. Now, that's strange for a home side. But this, I think that after a little while, they thought, this team aren't playing that well yeah. against us. Well, we nothing can, really to fear. Here, nothing because... to fear. We can do mm. something. And they didn't really lose many chances against them. And they started to create chances of their own because of slack Celtic defending. Yeah. And then the, the deadlock was broken not long before half time, of course. And it was a good goal. You can't argue about the quality of this goal, Derek, can you? Yeah, you can see they're getting a decent bit of possession here, which is quite a bobbly pitch, to be honest, at the moment. But there is Kamara. The ball was just in behind him. His position is wrong. He doesn't see Vazcek, who's been wide all, all night. And a great, very composed Vazcek. Rolls on along to Hallinap and tucks it away nicely. But I think, I mean, he's, he, was, he was on the blind side of, of Mo Kamara here and he's reacted too late from him. He's fortunate he didn't. It is actually, have a wee tug it is actually poor defending. I mean, I think the back four got caught out to an extent and maybe Kamara's position was taking it off where he should have been rather than where, uh, where the forward was. But he certainly got caught out and you get a pass played inside you as a wide player there, then you're in totally the wrong position. And uh, it's not offside, but there's no follow up. I mean, you see there that uh, Halana runs in there and the, the other side of the back four were there to defend it. Could That's have been good, worse. This was a great save. That's a great save. He's mm. had two or three good saves, Marshall tonight. No doubt about that. Even one just when he came to the edge of his box to take a long kick out. But that was a marvellous save right on half time. Yeah. And of course, at, at 2 0 down, you really would be fearing for Celtic. You still feel that Celtic have more quality about them, Derek, surely, than than, than App Media, who don't look to have an awful lot about them, look a decent side. But I'm looking for some creativity from the likes of Alan Thompson and Stan Petrov, perhaps. And we're, not, we're not seeing much at this stage, are we? At, at the moment, no. I don't, I, perhaps it's maybe the not making excuses for them, but maybe the heat is a factor there. Mm. Uh, but, you know, they've not played a lot of games, they don't know each other too well, the rustiness of the side. But you haven't been creative enough for me mm. in terms of chance. McGeady had a wee chance at one side. He was only on the game, maybe he was a bit rusty when he came on. His delivery was poor. Uh, and you feel, as always with Celtic, their best chances are going to come from a set play. Mm. Um, and they haven't had too many of them run about the box. Mm. No, it hasn't. Uh, of course, Chris Sutton's injury, which uh, we're still trying to, to, to chase up, actually. We haven't heard any news as to exactly what happened and how serious it might be. It clearly disrupted Celtic's rhythm. It's Let's take own, a look as to how it player, came. I think. Neil Lennon. I think Neil Lennon it is that goes into Topples it. over him. Yeah. Barbelli is a good shot here, actually. He does, but, but he, slides, he, says he slides in to block it, and Neil Lennon just uh, catch him knee into his face, I, I think. think he's, I agree with you there, Gordon. I think he's caught him with his knee or the cheekbone or the nose or yep. you know, some kind of concussion there because... Yeah. Chris Sutton doesn't go down so easily like that and he doesn't move and I think right away when a player doesn't move like that he he's realises hurt. a problem. Yeah, yeah, you, go and, you guys know that, when you go down and there's absolutely no movement you know it's a He didn't move at all and even when he's on the stretch he hasn't moved mm. at all, it looked as if he might have been unconscious but mm. it was certainly Neil Lennon who, and it was yeah. totally accidental. Yeah. And we'll obviously continue to try to find out exactly the extent of Chris Sutton's injury. Uh, Celtic defensively have definitely looked like a side who haven't played together too often. Although, again, you maybe have to make the point, they've played four pre-season friendlies. There should maybe be a little bit more of an understanding emerging than we've seen tonight, Gordon. Is that, is think, that being unfair? I, well, I just think it takes time. Uh, you, know, you build any, any defence and, you know, Kamara's a new player and the Celtic fans are still, you know, they're still not sure about him yet. Even the ones that have seen him playing the game so far. Looks decent in the ball going forward, but... It's, you know, it's all about how you defend as a unit. And there's another example, and that's Boba Baldwin getting caught out there, really, a, a through ball, just like the goal was. S simple balls, really. Simple ball over mm. the top, and mm. that, that's poor defending, because, you know, you see, it beats one defender and there's no cover for him. So I think that that's something they need to work on. But I, I found they were getting an awful lot of space just to pass the ball and, and, and get room in order to get shots in, and they seem to be creating far too many openings. That one got blocked, but I just thought that a, a goal was coming, I felt, it, even... Mm. First half, I thought that it looked as if they would score. You can actually see art media growing in confidence as, as the, the half goes on. We'll be back with more uh, from that first half, but let's head back out live to Bratislava then. And Kerry Denidson is talking to the former Celtic manager, Joe Vangloss. Dr. Vangloss, first of all, uh, very nice to see you again. Uh, who are you supporting, art media or Celtic? No, you know, we can see today very nice atmosphere, very nice game for both. I am keeping fingers for a good uh, football, but of course, if our media will win both games, it will be a big surprise. And today I think game is a little bit more 
tactical from the beginning of the from point of view of Celtic and uh, generally I think uh, Armedias have been showing their qualities. They are quite good in combination. They know to each other quite well. They are playing uh, quite well last season. They are our champions. And uh, secondly, the number 14, the new player who came to play for Armedia, he brought a little bit more technical part and straight on passing which was surprising for the defense of Celtic and very nice goal and I think by one goal they deserve for that first half. But uh, from the beginning Celtic start to play well and later on when we had a little bit even game, to me team looked to play too much tactically, just controlling results and so on. Of course second half will be much faster and much uh, stronger. Yes, attack. very quickly, what do you think will happen in the second half? Do you expect Celtic to score and, and do you think um, that Arcadia yes. will still win the game, do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think Armedia is a quite good team from a technical part of view. They are playing together a long period and uh, that achievement to play against great club like Celtic is, it's giving to the players new dimension. And they are showing that thing over here and uh, I think they are playing well. Celtic still they have a room for improvement and uh, I think in the second half they will use their experience, they will be a little bit more danger in front of the goal, but uh, generally game is open and uh, of course I am sending best regards to football supporters in Scotland, England and uh, I hope that we shall see second half in the same minimum, the same level, I hope it will be better level from uh, uh, Celtic Park. Dr. Venglos, thank you very much indeed for those kind thoughts. That's the word from Trackside here from Dr. Joe Venglos, the former Celtic manager. Plenty of room for improvement for Celtic. I think we can all agree with that. Back to you in the studio. Yeah, Dr. Joe never did do short answers, did he? But he sounds a bit more impressed with that media than Celtic so far, and, and you can't blame him. A lot for Gordon to talk about at half time. I think so. I mm. think he's got uh, he's got to lift his side. I mean, it might be a factor. Derek's talking about the heat, and that could be a factor mm. for them. It could be it could be a lot worse out there to play than we even imagine sitting in here. And that maybe results in the fact that you can't go full out uh, uh, without uh, you know becoming very tired quickly. Mm. So, but the thing about it is, is that they'll be more suited to the conditions. I, I just felt that Celtic gave them too much room, and that mm. media are a decent side, but Celtic made them look better than probably they are. There certainly weren't many Celtic chances to uh, get enthusiastic about, that's for sure. We picked out perhaps the best of them, and if you see that we're including one which is actually judged offside, uh, you'll work out that there weren't too many times when Celtic threatened the up media goal. Uh, this remains perhaps the best chance to set pieces, Derek, as we've said for the last two or three years. Yeah, I think uh, better maybe moving the ball. We've seen what happened before when Larson used to touch it to uh, Petrov and he a strike at goal. You keep a read it like a book, that one there. This is probably the best move I think of the half. A great crossfield pass to McGeady. And you just see young Aidan opening his body up, sees Paul Taylor for racing up on the right hand side. Makes good contact, there's a slight deflection there. But to think that's only the. I mean, I'm saying about the heat, but I don't want to make it as an excuse. I think Celtic mm. will be a, mm. a, a poor first half. And I don't know whether it may be St Gordon's tactics to try and go back with a clean sheet to Glasgow or what. But mm. for me, the. Sutton being the, injured the, could be a factor as well. You know, you've factor. lost what you, is going to be a formation. Sutton's a player that can make tackles, challenge the midfield, good in the air. All of a sudden, he's off. Magidi's on. Magidi does a lot more running about, but in a more a positive sense. Yeah. Petrov then uh, wants to get forward. So maybe Celtic are being caught out a bit in midfield now. Well, let's uh, head back out and uh, get another word with uh, Paul and Ian, who, of course, are our commentary team in Bratislava tonight. Ian, we seem to be saying here that we were once Celtic to lift the pace, but it's, it's a hot night. Is that maybe asking a little too much? It's really warm, Dougie. I mean, uh, you have to be here to realise how humid it is. Um, and very rare, I would say, for this stage of the season, particularly out here. And uh, it's a hot night, but they certainly need to do something. I said, and, and I think Gordon agreed, that I, I think the, the fullbacks are pushing far too far out the park. Either that or, or particularly Alan Thompson needs to play from behind the ball a little bit more. Uh, and also, it needs a lot more movement up top. Uh, there's, there's very little movement just now, and uh, the two centre backs are, are for uh, our media are coping quite comfortably. What about the state of the, the pitch, Paul? At times, I thought it looks a little bit bumpy as well. Is that, is that fair? Well, we had a walk on it before the game and there's a lot of patches just down the sides. There's a couple of sprinklers in, in the middle of each half, which doesn't help. And, and there's quite a camber on the pitch, a little, a little bit more than usual, Ian. 
Yeah, it is, and it's, it's really sticky, you know, and, and the guys in the studio know early season games, you do get the parts quite sticky, but, you know, they, they watered it for literally five seconds and then uh, didn't put it on, but that amazes me because it would probably suit them as well to have the ball uh, pinging about the pitch a little bit, but a little bit bumpy, a little bit sticky, but kind of typical, I would say, for this time of season. If you're looking for an improved Celtic performance team, which we obviously are, do you, do you think that their best chance is coming with playing through the midfield or, or the long ball? What do you think offers the best option for them? Well, unfortunately, I mean, I would usually say the long ball, but the two centre-backs are really coping well with John Hartson, and I don't think Zoravsky is getting close enough to John Hartson, so Maggedi showed a little flash there, his cross wasn't great, but I think if we can get the ball to the wider areas, uh, you know, Maggedi and Thompson's delivery is usually top-notch. Gordon touched on it, I think Sutton's a huge miss, you know, and I think the morale in the team kind of left him for a little bit while he, you know, when he went off, because his runs from midfield are crucial, and Petro's got to do that now. But I certainly think Celtic can score, but, uh, you know, they've got to keep the, the, the back door closed. All right, thanks very much indeed, lads. Well, uh, let's hope you've got something to get more enthusiastic about in the second half. The second leg, of course, is as soon as next Tuesday night at Celtic Park. We've got that for you live as well. Celtic against Art Media Bratislava next Tuesday night at half past seven. Uh, it's uh, Aidan McGeady, as we all know, is a hugely talented player, Derek. There's, there's almost an onus on him now to, to create what's been missing in midfield, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Mm. I think um, I don't think it suits Stan Petrov to play in a wide right position anyway. I think with his creativity, Aidan McGeady there, he's been in the team long enough now, he's experienced enough, even though he's still quite young. Um, he had a wee flash, as, as Ian said, but his delivery's got to be better. Uh, and there, but I'm just keep thinking back to the Liverpool game last night. Do you get, they were a goal down, it's not the end of the world, but mm. Celtic can improve. I mean, they can't get any worse than they played in the first half. And I think they're still a bit rusty, the heat. So I'm not making excuses for them, but they, I think they'll be better. Yeah, and you'd say that they need to get a goal. Or let's say they don't need to get a goal, but it would be a huge... You'd take 1-1 one, one now, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, Celtic mm. would, there's no mm. doubt about that. Mm. I mean, they want to leave the game open for the, for the home leg too. Mm. one nil's not too bad. I mean, mm. the, the, the Art Media lost 2-0 in, the, in their first qualifying game, end up win 4-1 at home. Mm. Celtic could score goals against that team, no mm. doubt. It's not quite about the performance tonight. We're, we're, we're talking about the performance, we're studying performance. It's about the result. Mm. That's the most important thing in cup football and in European football especially. Away from home, you want to get a goal. What the Celtic really, uh, probably get a goal would give them a, a right good chance of getting something back home. Mm. They can't afford, I don't think, to lose any more goals here or else it would become a real difficult job for them mm. in a week's time. Yeah, and, and, and following on from that line, Derek, we're, we're pleased that, that young David Marshall looks to be in excellent form tonight, doesn't he? Yeah, I wasn't sure who was going to choose Gordon. He's chose David Marshall and he's been an excellent choice. He's been really alert. Uh, his handling's been great. Mm. Um, he's been aware at times, you know, and yeah, I think as a, a Celtic or an old firm goalkeeper at any time, when you're not seeing a lot of the game, your concentration has to be right. Mm. And as has been perfect tonight. Yeah, Just looking at who they've got on the, the bench, Gordon, Al Adier is, is there, of course, if you want to throw him on, perhaps. But uh, yeah, he's got to give it 20 minutes just to see how things develop, of course. I think so. They've mm. had to make one substitution anyway, which was enforced upon them. You've always got to think that might happen. Al Adier, would, I think, will be on at some stage. Mm. Jarowski uh, had one good pass there, but he's been very quiet. He needs to get in the game a bit more, John Hartson, but they've maybe not had the best service yet. But, uh, Maggedi, if he could get those little runs going, he showed that the pace and the right hand side got across in, that's, that could maybe turn it around for Celtic. But they've got to get more organised. I think they've got to get a lot closer departments. There, there's too much space between their midfield and their defence, and Art Media are exploiting that at the moment. So, second half to come then, with uh, Celtic trailing by a goal at uh, half time in this uh, Champions League qualifier. Let's go back once again to Ian and Paul. Well, Celtic failed to score in only five games last term, so a couple of them were in European ties, but we'll be hoping that Celtic can make the breakthrough tonight in Gordon Strachan's first game in charge. His charges trail at half-time by a one goal to nil. And referee select LF Turkey looks to get the second half underway. Here in Bratislava, the main national stadium, a larger crowd than Art Media Bratislava. I used to playing in front of for their home matches. In the presence of Stan Varga and the Celtic team, the Slovak international captain, certainly a factor in swelling the crowd slightly. The second half gets underway. Jimmy Varga involved in the action. David Marshall comes away. Right to Hartson. Ball through again, well defended, Jan Jurika. His third season at Art Media, Radislava. Ball gets played on, 
and Telfer. Gives it away to Marshall. And Giddy. Celtic trying to find the rhythm. Start of the second half. Hartson again well defending. Hartson just tumbling in the opposition dugout. But just dusts himself back. He's a big hard lad, but I seldom have seen him take such a, a physical doing, as they say, from these two centre uh, centre backs. From Hartson, played through. Zemirski was almost there. Oh, it's a bad piece of play. Petrov trying to capitalise on the mistake by Debna. Hartson's round the back. Kamara. Last chat is there. Cross wasn't great there with Mike. Andre Debna. He retired from international football, but certainly his presence felt on the European stage. Goes back forward. Useful ball. Very timely from Stan Varga to stop his countrymen there, but again, Alnar looks very lively. Yeah, he looks a good player, good pace and good movement. And he's causing Celtic problems. Shearer plays the ball forward. Turned away by Ogzera. Second ball played forward by Kozak. David Marshall judges it perfectly. He did well there, David Marshall, because I thought for a moment I thought he was going to pick it outside his area. The judgment was perfect. That would have been a bit hard on him at the end of the, the first half. And it was a good stop, but I mean, if that had crept in, then he would have known he would, should have held yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It was a stop he had to make, and, and, and he didn't make it. He could have, he could have held on to it, though. But and the main thing is there was no damage done. Neil Lennon. Off onto Mogul Baldi. Alan Thompson just drifted in field, took his eye off the ball. Well, Bailey was very quickly in there. It's, it's because there was no movement ahead yeah. of him at all. You can see him look up and almost do a double take because yeah. there was nothing. Sure. Nice to play the ball forward. No angle ball came in. Thompson. Yeah. He's tried to play it wide, but really perhaps fortunate there. Some of the passes are, are being hit to areas here and perhaps rather than people. Yeah, yeah. The, the pass is not of usual Celtic stand at the minute, but they have started the second half reasonably well in terms of keeping possession of the ball. Kamara back tracks. Here comes McGiddy. McGiddy down on the left-hand side. Plays the ball across. Now flick forward. Again, two in the box, beats his man well, crosses an interesting one. Telfer again popping up. That's a good challenge. Sure hurt himself. He got the tackle out on Bobo Baldi. On that. And the injury there. Good challenge, certainly, Bobo Bali again, trying to find himself, bringing you know, the game forward, trying to take the game to his opponents. It was a decent little pass as a play, but what it did highlight was that the Celtics crossing the ball, you know, just there, Anthony has been very poor, which is very unlike him. Some attention being given. Five minutes gone in the second half. Good trailing by one to nil. Thompson. Zerowski tried to make the angle. It was a bit of run by Zerowski, the ball was a little bit under hit. Shearer was back on at left back. Paul Telfer. It was impeded slightly and then tried to pick the ball back up. 
It's not a closing Celtic game very quickly in the midfield. Oh no, you see there the lone player forward. Levin, McGinney start, even stop. Magunowski. To get in there, played the ball away. I'm sure that went out of play. It's going to be a corner. Possibly Celtic's chance, best chance to score tonight is some, is some a set play if they get their usual standard delivery. So Varga, Baldi start to come forward. And we're just dropping a little bit more. Alan Thompson will deliver. 37th European appearance for Celtic tonight. Alan Thompson. It's deep. No, far too deep. And it's going to go all the way. Out on the other side of play, that will give us a chance to go down pitch side to Kerradine and to get the latest on Chris Sutton. Yes, Paul, it's not been a good night for Celtic so far, 1-0 uh, down. Obviously, the news on Chris Sutton is that um, he has a cracked cheekbone. Now, the Celtic doctor hasn't come back yet. I understand he's still with him, um, and uh, Chris Sutton is getting treatment for a cracked cheekbone, so not good news at all for Chris Sutton right at the start of the season. Well, bad news for Chris Sutton, bad news for Celtic, and bad news for Celtic fans. Yeah, it's a big blow for the whole for the whole club, you know. Right. Well, this check is down at the moment. It's a bit stop-start at the start of the second half, and I guess that suits our media. They'd be happy to pack things up and go to Celtic Park. Yeah, right at this stage, I think Celtic might take a one-nil. I've got to say. Um, the thing about the Chris Sutton was it looked so innocuous. You didn't really see anything ha happen. It was just really unfortunate. Free kick there. The thing is, well, well the, the sun's went down, but it's not getting any cooler. It's still roasting, it'll be roasting out of the park. Terry Butcher will be rubbing his hands in joy. Celtic play on the Saturday. It is true. It's, it's the last place Celtic want to go back to it. Fair part, but the NSPL fixtures have gone that way. You can hear that match live on Radio Scotland, by the way. Join us on Saturday afternoon. And the true exclusive commentary of the SPL. But here, in European action. Celtic Trail, here's Daniel Chill. Spent some time with Slavia Prague, plays the ball forward. Dozak will go after. Stan Varga tries not to waste it. Kamara was aware. Vance Jack was behind him. Nice play by Artmedia Varga has to go in there. Needly got the ball away. And Cthulhu came up from right full back. And the ball's out of play. Keep up to date with all the SPL action too on the new sports scene. Quarter to five on Saturday afternoon. Suit Cosgrove. One of your hosts for that, and David Curry, the other. And all new sports in on a Saturday afternoon. So changes being considered by Celtic. Sean Maloney is warming up below us as John Hartson controls. Hits and his left Fordrick, which was expected of him in this game. He's apart from one shot, really not been overly involved. Here's Zerowski. Passing from Celtic, but they can't find any way past. At least they're keeping possession of the ball, though, you know, at this stage. And they've moved it from one side of the pitch to the other, you know, which is good. As a manager, I mean, it's perhaps going through the mind of Gordon Strack, and, you know, he said, they're not playing well. What, what, do, you, what do you do? Well, I, I, 
you know what? I don't, I don't think you go Kamikaze and try and score a goal, that's for sure. I think if he got offered 1-0, now he'd take it. But I do think Celtic are capable of scoring, as long as I do. But... Lovely skill back McGee, good pass to Hearts him with the opportunity. Goalkeeper was getting across. It's been a fairly lean night for John Hartson. The new lean shape of John Hartson too. And he couldn't get that on target. Yeah, good play again by, by McGeady. He's, he's done well since he came on. And Hartson, that's where he likes the ball. You know, close in, but didn't quite get his, his shot on target. Oh, the wee visit to the health farm that John Hartson during the summer. Looks in terrific shape. He's very underrated with the ball at his feet, John Hartson. Very underrated. Art Media. The observer. They can't make any headway, but Kozak can, the internationalist. He's there again. Little ball for Arnaud's got in behind. Ball across, Marshall's in trouble! And so Celtic! The celebrations come from Bashir's first check. And our media are doing what nobody thought possible, and that's leading Celtic by 2-0. Cut up at pass again by Kozak, who played the first pass for the first goal. Lovely ball inside the fullback. Celtic caught a little bit square again. Well, it's the old three-man move yet again, and David Marshall was horrified to see that across. Kamara was behind his man. And with 57 minutes gone in the second half, it's out media, Bratislava 2, Celtic nil. I think Kamara has to, obviously it's not good to point the blame, but he has to do better there. He has to be in front of his man, uh, ready to clear the ball away. But that's a hammer blow, Paul, an absolute hammer blow. Now they need to really go and try and score a goal, and that might leave them open at the back. Yeah, well. It was well worked, you can't deny that. Well, he's been probably the best player on the park for me, Blanchard's first shot. And you can see he deserves the goal for his play. But Celtic are now struggling. And Bratislava. Sean Maloney will come on. Dorica gets the ball away. Team's always just vulnerable just after they scored, so that will be happy just to get the ball away up the other end. Baldi tries to step in. Lena. Petrov, captain Bulgaria to win here. In the stadium, he plays it forward. Bulgaria, and that takes a deflection. Nope. We expected Telford to go on the outside again. They won't play together. Very difficult. I think Bulgaria should just have played the ball a little bit earlier. Uh, Telford was in, of course, the ball in the ball. Well, the hero being acclaimed and applauded by his own goalkeeper, shall we? So he gets played away. And Derica, who's impressed with this, Sean Maloney. Interesting to see who's going to be removed. I'm wondering if uh, on his competitive Danny Raskin might be the one for the hook. I would have thought Zaraski would be the one that comes off. Well, Stilian Petrov gets a yellow card. Not really much in that. No, I think, it is, I think it is the yellow card, I've got to say, because, I mean, he's, he's, you know, the players on the other side of the Celtic midfield, I thought it was quite blatant. Blatant, but it's not the kind of... I, I, I don't know, I think he's a wee bit un unfortunate there. Zerovsky. Yeah, Zerovsky. He's leaving the field of play. Well, he had great fun in the qualifying round. Last time he played in the first round against WIT of Georgia. They won away by 8-2, scored twice. He played against Real Madrid, in which he didn't score, but he gives way to Sean Maloney. He had two shoot problems, of course. And Sean Maloney has welcomed back just three appearances last term for Maloney. Celtic have lost two goals. They can't afford to lose any more. Here comes Schur. Through the Rimbaldi. Well, you're watching something that doesn't happen very often. Celtic rocking. No, you, see, you can see that media growing in confidence as the game goes on. 
actually chatted about the game beforehand, and I think we thought, you know, 1-1 one, one Celtic perhaps winning 1-0. I don't think we saw this coming. No, it, no. I, I, I definitely thought a score draw maybe, but I didn't see this, no, definitely not. The thing is, if Celtic can score a goal, 2-1 obviously isn't that bad. That's what they'll be hoping for just now, anyway. Again, okay, the corner not delivered into the box and delivered away to Maloney. McGiddy put his head down and stopped and went again. And you can tell it's early in the season. Maybe McGiddy trying to make something happen down the right side. Germain Aliandier is warming up. Who are you going to call? Well, it's only Andy here at the moment for Gordon Strachan. Is that again involved? He's been exceptional, of course. He really has. He's been outstanding. And plays it wide. Ball forward. A little... Maloney got in there, but he was offside. The flag going up very quickly on the near side. Celtic need a little spark. They need a little sparkle. Yeah, they need something. They need something to happen. They need a, a you know, mistake from the opposition or a spectacular goal or a piece of brilliance. It's certainly an atmosphere now, though, Paul. Well, Gordon Strachan glances across to the scoreboard and registers his displeasure. Two no scoreline. Start media Bratislava, very much the unfashionable club here in Bratislava. Slovan and Inter were the two big teams. Slovan, well, well, they were mired in financial problems and bankruptcy, and well, they dropped into the second flight. And Inter narrowly escaped relegation last term as Art Media took the title for the first time in their history. John Hartson going in. Well, I thought shoulder charge was allowed. You know, he's been taking a stick all night, and the first thing he does is he gets pulled up for it. I don't think it was a foul. Neither did he. No, but John never does, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea gets called back to the bench. A man on loan from Arsenal. His first Celtic action in competitive football. Telfer. And again, a nice interesting ball through. Telfer, though, stood up well to run as far forward. Rick. Again, it's number 14, Jure Halna. He was causing problems with Fordrick. Can get past Temper. Well, the noise of the fans is certainly loud where we are. A bank of fans round us. So we watch the team pick the ball up again. For Belly, who's probably been a disappointment as Baldy goes in very heavily. That's a yellow card. Well, how now? It's foul for his troubles, and Bobo Bali sees a yellow card, but the challenge was from behind, it was hard, and that was yellow. I think deservedly so, Paul. He went through the back of the players' calves there. Uh, right on the Achilles. Mm, definitely so, right? But again, you saw McGeady coming in field there. That Celtic front to be so precise. Instead of the white players, trying to stay a little wide and, and get down the flanks. Again, we can come back to the loss of Chris Sutton. I mean, Zuraski didn't have the best of games, but he immediately loses the option of putting Sutton up front because he's not there. And it's just a little bit more lightweight. Yeah. Well, the idea. I did just to see who's coming off here. Yeah. Well, Arnold is certainly OK. Alan Thompson looks set to be withdrawn. Maloney tries to scavenge as he picked it up, he has, what pace does he have, Sean Maloney, good play, tries to drag across, 
John Hartson just couldn't get in there. But a bit more heartening from Celtic. Yes, Maloney, Maloney's looked quite bright. Um, but if Hartson if had just been a couple of yards further out of the park, he'd have tapped in there. Well, it was a big ask. It certainly was, but Armidia scored from two similar positions, that's the right. ball being pulled across. That's right. I mean, that's not good for Celtic, Thompson coming off. I mean, I know he's short of fitness, but a key, key player for, for Celtic. That's the third and final change for Gordon Strachan, and he makes it after 66 minutes. And Ali Adier, 4-3-3, three, three, comes on. Well, you wouldn't accuse Gordon Strachan of lacking invention and going for it. Here's Ali Adier. Immediately makes an impact, the ball away, can Celtic finish, oh. good save, there's a second opportunity, ball comes across, it's off the line, Deb not off the line, the goalkeeper with the save, Sean Maloney with the opportunity. Oh, magnificent chance, and good play as well, but you see here, a great chance to score, good save, but he's got it better. Let me try and come forward and again test Celtic, it was rather optimistic ball. It was a good block from the goalkeeper. It was. It was a key moment in the game, though. I think yeah, Young Maloney's got to put that in. Well, actually, just played it straight out of the goalie, didn't he? Yeah, I just wonder if he would have pulled it across. Yeah. But Debna was again there. The introduction of Ali I mean, an initial immediate impact. Here comes Maloney. Challenge! Oh, no. That is simply unbelievable from Aidan McGinney. His first European goal was there for the taking. And how he missed, you need to ask him. Well, I think you heard me shouting there. I can't believe he missed that. Again, Maloney's taken up two really good positions. And, you know, I think it tells its own story, the pictures. Well, all he had here was waiting to score. And Aidan McGinney, well, he thought he was going to. Five goals last term. This should have been his first of this term. Is that uh, Van Vossen? Well, almost, almost. I certainly won't like watching it against the, the, the young lad. Yes. But two great chances, Paul. You know, it just makes Absolutely. you think it might be able to score in the last 20 minutes. Or... He has to just let that one go. And get on with the game, does McGeady. No free kick awarded. Not media. In the rubber, the green there against the men in green. We are far from Mary. Corbelli again just lays the ball off. Oh, that's confidence. That's overconfidence. And he has to come and retrieve the situation. And Eureka. A little short, there's Ali Adier, and that's what Sure did to make sure. Petrov. And to Hartson, who's not stopped working with 69 minutes of this match. Adier plays it across, McGeady. Quality is important here. That's a decent ball that was headed away. My Gorbelli. Art Media Bratislava with everybody behind the ball. And now they will break. Over Baldi. Well, referee allows play to continue. And Branislav Obzela went to ground, the uh, internationalist. He got very quickly, though, didn't he, after He did, he did. You always worry when somebody's on a yellow card, exactly. the referee, you wonder what angle they're at, what did yeah. they actually see? And Bobo Barley came forward in the first half, had to be a bit more reserved in the second. To the more attacking players to try and get Celtic back in this tie. Can all change so quickly, 2-1 would be a very decent scoreline in terms of the way this match has gone. Here comes Vajas Vashak, 21-year-old, second goal scorer. 
to Kozak. There's that angle ball into the box, the flag was up, but Telfer was there. He covered it well, you know, yeah. if Kamara maybe had done that, the second goal, you know, it might still be one nothing. I'm impressed with Telfer, he does well. Some down the pitch well. Get to Hartson, here's Telfer again, right on cue. Angle ball, the goalkeeper comes. Well, he looks calm. I think on the far side, Sean Maloney thought there might have been a wee chance, and we well, advised that the coach of our media certainly didn't appreciate the goalkeeper as a little flat. From this angle, it looked like it was Johnny Maloney. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the end of the evening, but what an evening to remember it's been for Blanchett's first Jack. His third European appearance of the season. So I'm still the second goal, and here we see the heroes. Welcome off the field and back into the dugout and the fans to applaud. Uh, being introduced into the action is Martin Nikolic, who's come through the youth ranks here at Art Media. Well, that's why he's being applauded and an impressive leap of the advertising boards too. Well, this young man is very highly thought of. OK, look, holds on, he was a sub last week. And the victory against Kara Almaty. It's an injury time goal by Van Van Stano. Punching it for the Slovakians. Why we're here and not some five hours further away from time time in Kazakhstan. Yeah, yeah. Loses out. Sure. Got his footing. Project plays the ball inside Telfer. And Zena. Comes Project again. He's got a decent shot on him. Not by Bobo Baldick. And Art Media just coming back into it a little bit more, Ian. Yeah, they kind of weathered Celtic storm. I, I think the Celtic got one of those, they, they took one of those chances in the net. They might have got another one, but now it's Art Media again making the play. And again they come forward. Kozak really pull the trigger himself, pulls it back. The deflection was important. You know, how now was waiting. And Celtic get a little bit of fortune they needed. Somebody three and a half minutes gone. A horrible European night so far from Celtic. 2 0 now, and the loss of Chris Sutton with a crack cheek going. And the loss of a third goal is almost unthinkable. Kovac has been one of the outstanding players of the field. Maybe you're doing better having a shot there. And then it's black and white that come forward. Forward. Gordon Strachan's made the three changes in. Is that really much else he can do in terms of shuffling the system? No, I don't think so. I thought he the last one was positive, and you know they got the, they got the dividends. They should have scored the goal. But uh, not looking at that now, though. Tarika tries to take on Bardi, played it across, the, the touch off Stan Varga. And it wasn't kept in by David Marshall. Well, looked like the goalkeeper had done his job from this angle. On the far side, Al Fassi and Dires, the Turkish assistant referee, said no. The ball never it looked, it looked a, a good couple of feet in the ball player. I don't know why he gave a call. Uh, the, ball, the ball wasn't out. Maybe he's looking at his body or his feet, but the ball wasn't out. Peter Burak is being introduced into the action. Branislav of Zera comes off. Former Slovan Bratislava player has enjoyed the return to his old stomping ground. And Peter Burak, who featured in one of the matches against Kerek, the ball comes across and in! An unbelievable finish! It was taken so quickly! We knew he was dangerous, Martin Rikulik, and he certainly proved to be. We've been talking about the corner kicks all night. 
And now they were a little bit strange. That one certainly wasn't strange. You have to wonder why they've not done that sooner. It was perfectly executed. We talked about the nightmare scenario for Celtic, and here it is. What a strike for David Marshall. Absolute class. I mean, the ball ended for the first was perfect, and the, the volley was absolutely outstanding. Well, Halana gets his second of the evening. Beautifully set up, and it's unthinkable in Slovakia. On Gordon Strachan's debut, it's our leader, Bratislava 3, Celtic 0. Well, Lina McGeady missed from a couple of yards out as the ball comes in. Can Celtic get in? It was pulled across. And the idea. It's another decent chance, but another really decent chance. Well, it's hard to know now where to start to, to talk about the game here. It arguably should have been 2 1. And Celtic go to sleep. They'd seen the corners come out the box time and time again. Halnar's proved he's a decent player. Nobody there. Bang. Defensively, Celtic have been uh, all over the place all night. One thing you've got to make clear as well, from what I've seen and what you've seen, that, that, this team are decent, they're no better than that. You know, they've done well at certain occasions, but they're a decent side, no better. Ball played across. Away by Volvo Baldick. Well, Celtic, well, they've had automatic qualification in the Champions League group last year. In the previous three years, they had to try and qualify. They were successful on two or three occasions. They lost to Baal in August 2002 and nearly went to the FA Cup final. But there's no safety net now. McCulloch comes in! A terrific for Celtic! Martin McCulloch, the Youth Academy player, scores! Media Bratislava cannot believe the night they are having here at the Tele and Paul Stadium. It's at Media Bratislava 4, Celtic 0. If you watch it here, once it comes up, Kamara has just dropped his man again. He's run off Kamara inside and it's a decent finish. Well, he turned away. He ran away, Kamara was marking him and he ran off uh, with Kamara. Well, you see it here. He's run off Kamara there. Kamara's got to go and stay with him now. Well, David Marshall could do nothing to stop the ball from going past him. And Celtic are all sorts of problems. Unthinkable. They played in Europe 15 times the season before, 16 times, just six times last season of the Champions League. This year, it could be twice. Absolutely unbelievable. You see the second leg here, of course, on the BBC. And Celtic have to do something magical. Will the leg still matter? The volley comes in. And then you're sure a fifth goal is surely. I mean, we thought a third goal was unthinkable. Oh, I mean, Celtic are all over the place just now. The worrying thing is there's over 10 minutes left. And Celtic are just all over the place at the moment. And Gordon Strachan, well, he changed things. You know, McGeady, we've talked about it, could have scored. It was not to be. That's the thing about being a manager. If McGeady and, uh, had scored, then the change would have worked. And it was an open goal. Well, Celtic, well, the last time they lost by 3 0 was Porto in the first group stage 2001 2002. We have to go back a long way to see the last time that they lost by four goals in Europe. Keeps getting worse. Runs left. Fordrek comes forward. Mikulic chooses. And they are on the ball. Celtic have to try and become composed. Of, well, the away goal is almost vital now. They right, need it. If they can net one, we said that at 2 0, and it's now 4 0. You would never say impossible going back to Celtic Park. No. Nothing's impossible no. there, but, you know, it's a tough job. But it'll be a hell of a night at Celtic Park, that's for sure. Here comes Sean Maloney. 
He's trying to be inventive. Little pass through. Beautifully done. Can Maloney finish? Takes it. The touch goes down. Not given. Well, the Celtic fans were looking for it. They were on their feet. And the tackle deemed correct by the referee. You could maybe hit it a little earlier as well, Paul. Well, it's the opportunity to do so. They're preparing a change from Osano, the hero from last week, preparing to come on. And this time is just slipping away from Celtic, a little over eight minutes to go. Drawn by Ali Adia. And Sirica makes the challenge. Valdi came in. There's no free kick there. It was a good challenge from Bobo Valdi. And it's Magidi. Magidi. He just couldn't get past his man. I think he's my I think he could lay the ball off just a little bit earlier at times and keep his, you know, his skills still in the wider areas. Well, that video have done what Barcelona, AC Milan and Shakhtar Donetsk couldn't do to Celtic last turn, and that's take four goals off them. And this is an art media side that have played two league matches this season. They've lost them both and scored. But now, in the second European game at home, they've hit four for the second time. 4-1 last week, Celtic will take 4-1 right now, but I mean, the air just far too heavy on the challenge there. So the change is going to be made, Daniel Schur is going to come off, and Pablo Stano can slot in easily at left fullback, he'll come on. This was the penalty incident, the ball held up. Maloney, yeah. I didn't think so. No, there wasn't a lot, and I think Sean should maybe hit that a little bit earlier. Really nice play. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, done, he's done well when he's supposed to come on Sean Maloney. He's looked quite great. And Celtic's problem, partly at the moment, is trying to get the ball to them. They're now, you know, being outgunned in the midfield, finding it hard to create. Well, in the air, it certainly looks useful. He's got the footwork, but he's not had the opportunity just yet. I think Gordon Smith said something pertinent at half time. The Celtic do look really disjointed. They look as if they're all different units of the pitch rather than one unit. And certainly they don't look as if the midfield players don't look as if they trust the back four, that's for sure. Well, if memory serves me correctly, the last time Celtic lost by four goals in Europe was back in 1991 when they lost to the Notre Dame Zaman. Ian Brady was in charge at the time. That night was bad. This night, well, that's equally as horrific in football in terms for Celtic. Paul Telfer. Tough start to his Celtic career. There's the ball in again. Dead man is there. Stano. There's the ball forward. Art Media again, the flooding forward. And goes out with a rare bad pass. And the is just waving his players back. And that's why the angle ball through. There they are. Lovely touch. And that's good covering. Neatly done by Peter Burak. And Celtic. The corner kick. They need to make something count from the set place. Yeah, got a good delivery and like a big lads attack it. Which is something that, that, that they'll be poor all night delivering the ball in the box. Which is one thing that's so unlike Celtic. Here in McGeady. McGeady pings it out. Run it away. Well, that media score from their last corner kick, Celtic get an effort on goal. The 
Excuse me, Vivi. If you're just joining us here on BBC, our graphics operator hasn't been on a big night out in Slovakia, I can assure you. It is 4 0 to our media. Sean Maloney, this is a chance. Well, Sean Maloney, I think it's kind of distance. I think he used to torment Aberdeen from him. He picked on Aberdeen more than anybody else. I saw him many, many times coming through as a kid, playing in the under 21s or the under 19s. The amount of times he scored from here. Well, let's hope he. Just preparing to play the ball away. Six years at the club. Two and a half minutes to go. Up near Bratislava for Celtic Mill. Stan Varga, a horrible return it's been for Stan Varga. Played for Tata and Petrov when they defeated Dundee United. That's the last time. Scottish club lost to Slovakia. Ball gets played forward. It comes across. Oh, that's going to be a free kick. Neil Lennon's drifting out of these things and wondering if Neil Lennon's okay. Well, it he, he certainly looks very tired, but maybe you could say that for a lot of the Celtic players. But uh, Neil Lennon's so important to them that, you know, when he drifts out of a game that they certainly feel it. We heard from Dr. Joseph Venglos earlier, the coach of the century in Slovakia, the 20th century. And ball goes back. We had a little power search, and we did lose you for a moment, we understand. We'll be in Slovakia, but we're glad to be back with you. Just let it spoil the game for you. We miss none of the action here. Podrick gives it on to Kozak. Every pass being applauded now. And that's a good one too. Stano comes in. He scored last week. Played the ball across. Podrick wanted it. And he tried to bring it down. Baldi tracked him back. And then won the ball. And the ball goes back to David Marshall. Well, he won the battle to be the Celtic number one. I wonder how he's feeling now. John Hartson seemed to go through on Bobley. And Bobley remained down. And the referee is going to lose some attention. It was a little naughty by John Hartson, but I don't think there was much contact, to be honest. The big lad Kojak tonight has been absolutely magnificent. His pass has been outstanding. To be fair, there's been several good performances, and it's all come in the black and white. Oh, I definitely agree with that. Agree with that. Three minutes of stoppage time. Well, Celtic needs something to happen. As the buggy comes on to treat the injured player, just waste a little bit more time. Well, Gordon Strachan said yesterday this was what it was all about. He was in the privileged position of setting out teams to attack rather than stopping teams. And it's just not gone his way tonight. To be fair, Gordon, since he made that change, you know, because I know when we get back home, you know, some of the press will be 
going ballistic, but the changes he made the Celtic since then, you know, straight after the change they made two, three. It should have been two one. Oh, they, they should have, you know, they should have scored both from them. Both two great chances. Yeah, two one to four nil. What a swing! So, two minutes of stoppage time, but there will be some extra time too. As the Slovakians, who were tipped to struggle to score goals with the absence of Filip Sebo, who went to Austria Vienna. 22 goals last term, but it's done just fine without him. Alan Arl the double. He's led the way. So, the closing moments of the match. And Art Media still look like they want to come forward. And the ball over the top, onside. Is there a hat trick in this match? There is! There's a hat trick for Shilas Halidan and the Slovakian under 21. May well have taken his side into the Champions League third round draw. It's unbelievable in Bratislava. It's Art Media Bratislava 5, Celtic 0. A long ball over the top again for Alan. I'm, I'm in disbelief here. And, uh, a decent finish, but uh, it's like a, a soft, soft goal to lose. Well, he was through. He showed it. Marshall stood up to him, but he couldn't prevent the ball going through his legs. And it's been horrible for Celtic here in the National Stadium of Slovakia. And Art Media, well, they'll be firm favourites now to go through. What it does mean is it's going to have to be a famous, famous Parkhead night to be yeah. through. Well, it's been some famous nights, but, well... And we've said it, but there is no UEFA Cup place for the team that loses out in the second qualification match. Well, it's Bedlam round here. And this is the Hancock Stadium. And we do Bratislava. Well, they want to play here all the time. They come to Glasgow next Tuesday, a match you can see on the BBC. It will be some night. Well, it started out fairly tably for Celtic. But they've lost four goals in the second half. And there it is, the final whistle. What a night for our media Bratislava. Well, the coach yesterday at the press conference looked almost indifferent to the fact that his side was playing in the Champions League. He'll feel so different tonight. The celebrations will be there on Gordon Strachan's first match in charge of Celtic. It was supposed to be a colourful occasion. It ended being dominated by black and white and the number 14, Jurak Halnia. It finished here in Bratislava, unbelievably. Art Media Bratislava 5, Celtic 0. And Celtic fans, quite understandably, absolutely furious. An abysmal Celtic performance, a shattering defeat, their worst in Europe for 14 years, and potentially an absolute financial calamity. They can't complain, Gordon. No, I mean, I felt at half time it was a poor performance. And I said they'd have to improve their performance. The only thing they did do in the second half they hadn't done the first half was create more opportunities. And if you look at it, we will see the fact they could have been back in the game if they take those opportunities. But all in all, after that, the goals they lost were shocking. I mean, when you think of Celtic over the years in Europe, the wonderful performances they've had in recent years, and you compare that with tonight, it is a massive, massive contrast here. And, you know, people blame Gordon Strachan, you know what they blame, but a lot of that was down to the players tonight. It's just, it's just a shambles at times. Well, that, that's the point. Well, obviously, Gordon Strachan will get an awful lot of stick for this defeat, but when players make schoolboy errors, as they did tonight, Derek, surely the players have to take some of the responsibility. Yeah, very much so. I think at times they were getting caught out. They were, Gordon said, as you both said, they are disjointed. They are all over the place. Their positioning, positional sense at times was, was awful. And to lose five goals away from home, which is quite incredible, 
Um, but the financial implications for the club was just unbelievable. Yeah, it really is frightening. Gordon Strachan, we're told, has gone straight to the dressing room. I suspect he may not emerge for some time. It wasn't a good first half performance. It just got worse and worse in the second half. Let's take a look at the first two goals then. Uh, the first of them coming just before half time, uh, a half in which. Uh, Celtic had not played well, and maybe this goal was coming, Gordon. Yeah, there was a, a slight gulf between the teams in the first half. Celtic hadn't played that well, but that was poor defending again. Not only for people running off their marker, that's what we found as we get more and more as the game went on, but that's a, a classic example of it there. The ball's played wide there, and, and there's a lovely little ball there, but look, there's, there's the goal scorer. He's, he's on his loan. Hallinar gets a hat-trick tonight. He's been brought in to score goals. that They've had to replace their top striker. He's away to Austria. And he's got a hat trick tonight. He gets sent off in his first game. This is the first goal he's actually scored for the club. But look at the room he's got at the back post here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, just the pass from Kozak to, to uh, Vaskak there. It's just Kamara was constantly exposed in that play. Okay, yeah. he's getting forward, but his positional sense was very poor there. Yeah. And he's at fault again for the for the second goal. There, yeah, what's the running off the ball here? Look, nobody picking up the run. You know, there's there's people, there's defenders there, ball watching. They're, they're not looking to see the run that comes off. And there's. He gets in at the back post and scores, but I mean, look, look at the run he's allowed to make into that space there. And then getting across, and, and there's Kamara wrong side again, 2-0. And I, I just felt after that, I thought Celtic now do have to get a goal tonight in order to, for the home leg to, to, to have a chance. But then, you know, it just it went from bad to worse after this. It certainly did. He's uh, getting in the blind side here, though. you can see, the, it's a great ball across goal, but Kamara again, sleeping, doesn't see the guy coming behind him. And uh, obviously they're punished for it. I mean, it's, it's, it's but it was, it was basic people stuff, isn't it? running off the ball, Dougie, and not being tracked. Just seemed to be running free. They come off the marker, and suddenly they're free. Yeah. And, and that, that happened quite a lot. Even there was other opportunities they actually missed. Mm. They could have got more goals, but you know, Celtic could have got goals too. Well, that's the thing because uh, Sean Maloney had a chance, which perhaps he could have done better with. And then there was this astonishing miss by Aidan McGeady from what six six feet out? Couldn't have been any more than that. A couple of paces, really, Derek, wasn't it? Incredible. Just balls up in front of him. It's just a mm. cruel game, isn't it? I mean, that could have got him right back in the match. Mm. And you can tell by the reaction of his face there at. Uh, and to be honest, that summed up the night because it's um, so it is a cruel game at times. But that's just it should be an easy tap in. But they really do see it happen. I've seen it happen before. It bubbles up in front of them. And it's over the bar. Yeah. So that could have been two one. Within a few minutes, it was three 0 This once again, the happy Helena, and again a bad goal from Celtic's point of view. Well, Kevin said that was a terrific strike. But again, you shouldn't be considering goals from that far out there. I mean, it was so quick that the Slovakian director missed it. Yeah, it was a strange one though, because it was a corner kick. Celtic had nobody on the post, mm. uh, but Halna just pulled himself out to the, the edge of the box, was waiting there, and nobody's marking him. Look, he's totally free. It's, it's maybe something off the training ground they've done before, but it's all the time in the world there to get his strike in. His technique is fantastic though, Gordon. Yeah. A great goal, can't take away him from the boys scoring great strike. from there. Yeah. Great strike, but there uh, should be somebody out pressing him or you know, put him under some yeah. kind of pressure. So we, we give uh, give uh, Art Media some credit for that, and that was a fantastic strike. But the fourth and the fifth goals were just quite unbelievable from a Celtic point of view. Art Media at this stage threatening to score every time they cross the halfway line. And again, this is schoolboy stuff, isn't it? Yeah, there's enough defenders around about him that he gets his touch. And he's, he, the thing about this one is he's scrambling to get the ball under control. So that's when you have to go and pressurise somebody. But look at look, look, Kamara just steps off him. You know, where, where, what's, what's Kamara thinking he's going to do there rather than just go and close the guy down? What's he, 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 he takes his first touch. He's not got it under control here. Vargas one side of him. Somebody else has to be in there at the other side stopping him getting his shot at him. Yeah, more Kamara's actually pulled to the left-hand side. If this is going to press the ball and put him under pressure. He has to. Two guys put him under pressure because... You know, you're at the edge of the box here, you know, and it's an opportunity to score from there, and he, and he, done, he scored from there. But again, with acres of space, so as, as Art Media running, had all night, Running off of people, space. Dougie, mm. once again there, I mean, a, a simple ball mm. over the top mm. between Telfer and Baldy there, and they, he runs through and gets a shot. They had a warning in the first half of the ball over the top of Baldy, and I think by that stage anyway, Celtic had gone, the discipline had gone, the shape had gone, God and I were just stating, we're talking through the game, that they were all over the place by that time, and... Uh, you know, they look tired, but I think when you're getting beat heavily like that, your head goes, your concentration goes, and I'm not making excuses, they were poor, very, very poor tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't like to bring up his name just tonight, and at the moment maybe shouldn't, but Jackie McNamara, what a loss. Yes. For Celtic, either left back, right back, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? A player, Celtic weren't losing goals like that before. Mm -hmm. Guy who got, got himself in the right position and, and also communicated with other people in the back four and told them what they should be doing in the organisation. There was no one seemed to take responsibility there for organising that defence. I don't think we've ever seen Jackie getting caught out with a ball in behind him in there, Gordon, did we? You know, like, I can't on the remember side. many no. situations no. that he did. A disorganised shambles, I'm afraid, from Celtic's point of view, Gordon Strachan will certainly carry the can for the defeat, although I think we all agree that the players surely have to take some.